The schools have access to so much data and information on learners' records of informal assessment, formal assessment, and then of course internal and external exams. The problem that occurs is that most school managers and teachers don't use this data effectively and efficiently to actually improve on the results. So schools and teachers should give the learners and their parents sound feedback on where they can improve. And of course, the teachers themselves need to know how they can improve in their teaching methodologies, the assessment, and then of course, classroom management styles. And this will hopefully lead to better results. So the only way to actually gather this feedback information accurately is by analyzing the data at hand. And we're gonna go through a process now, step by step, on how do you use this bell curve or normal distribution to analyze data effectively and with the view of improving. The bell curve is often seen in a negative light. However, it's a very effective way to ascertain where problems may lie. It doesn't necessarily give the solutions, but it certainly raises those red flags as to where the possible problems and problem areas could actually lie. So let's have a recap on the bell curve. The majority of learners should lie between the 40% and 60% mark on an average bell curve. So that shape you see in front of you now is what the bell curve generally looks like or should look like. But this is making certain assumptions. The first is that the assessment is actually of standard. So what you use to assess the learners, the task, the tools, is all of the right standard or the correct standard. The second is you are assuming the teaching is actually of standard. So the way that the teachers taught and that the learners are, are taking the information in is of a particular standard. And then of course we mustn't forget that we're also looking at or should be looking at a learners or group of learners that are a true representation of the population spread of the country. Now remember when we're looking at a bell curve, we are actually looking at the distribution of skills. So we are assuming that any group of kids, and statistically they say it should be a group of 25 or more. So if you've got less than 25 learners, it's not that you can't use it, but just bear this in mind that it might be a little bit skewed. But the trend is that if you're sitting with a group of more than 25 learners, those achievements of skills should be spread throughout um, in, in, a, in a shape that looks like that bell curve. So what the bell curve also helps us with, or plotting trends, is that when learners are not performing, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're just weak. So we have a look, there's a, a huge amount or a large number of low performers there. But this could be, there could be other reasons for their underperformance. By plotting these curves on top of a normal spread, you can actually see where the problem could be. Another effective way of using this bell curve is to actually assess the problems of certain classroom assessments and practices by plotting the same group of learners, different subjects, one on top of each other. Where the curves differ from each other, there could be problems, especially when they differ vastly. So here, if you have a look, you've got a comparison of your two languages, your home language and your first additional language, and your maths. It's the same group of learners, and the, the curves look very different. So again, as we said, the bell curve is not going to give you the answers, but it is going to raise a red flag where there could be a problem. So let's go through the process of using the bell curve to analyze the data. Let's go through it step by step together. So the first thing to remember is there are five key steps. We first obtain the data, then we convert it if necessary, we order it if necessary, then we plot the data, and then we analyze it. And it's important to go through those five steps. So let's by start by looking at this is a group of grade 10 learners and you'll see on this table, so this is raw data that you've got from your classes, you'll see here that they've got an assessment 1 and assessment 2. So this data is available to you, I'm sure you've got whatever methods you use in your school, you can print this out or you can put it up on an Excel spreadsheet. The problem is this data is not necessarily useful for, for plotting a curve unless you are plotting assessment one against assessment two. That would be different. But in this case, we want to see how have these grade 10 learners performed overall. So we need to take these two assessments and we need to convert the data. So by converting it, the easiest way to do it is to actually convert it to codes. So you could do percentages as well. You could have taken those two assessments and worked out percentage. But here with codes, um, it's just a simple number to work with, and also it's quite an easy calculation to do. So now we have a set of data where we've got all the names and surnames, all the initials and surnames, and we have their final codes. 
we still can't use this data as is. It's very difficult to now start plotting with this, so you need to order it in a way that is very useful. Now remember the bell curve is actually going to be the distribution of codes, so we need to put it in a way that is useful and easy for us to use. So the next step is ordering the data, and the easiest way to do this is to look at, take the names out of the equation because here remember you're not looking at individual learners you are looking at a trend so here on the left hand side you're going to see you've got codes 1 to 7 going down and next to each of these codes we are saying how many learners achieved that code so for example in this case one learner achieved a code 1 four learners achieved code 2 three learners a code 3 six learners a code 4 five learners a code 5 12 learners a code 6 and 1 a code 7. So probably if you're a visual person or you, you enjoy it, you, you can read tables, you probably straight away can see a trend forming here. Whereas if you've just got a list of learners with their results, it's very difficult to see a trend. Yes, you can quickly calculate the average, you can look at the top marks and the bottom marks, but this shows a trend. So now we're going to use this data and we're going to plot the data. And some people do use bar graphs. I find it so much easier to, do, to use line graphs. It just shows visually a lot easier and particularly if you, you're plotting one curve over another. So taking those exact results or that table that we've just created and ordered, we're now going to plot it on a graph. And you'll see we've done exactly the same we've taken where it's one learner at the bottom remember that the the codes go across the bottom and the learners up the side and this is important to get it round the right way so your codes your results um, always go along the bottom so one learner achieved code one four learners code two three code three six code four five code five twelve code six and one code seven and straight away you can now see that there is a trend forming so now you've got all your data in front of you. Now the important part is to analyze the data. So how do we go about analyzing data? Well, the first step, the most important step, is to put a bell curve over it. So you want to be able to compare a be the bell curve, the proper distribution, to the actual graph that you've got. So remember again, if we look at the bell curve, we're saying the lowest performers should be between codes one and almost three. Your average performers are between three and five and your high performers are, are between five and seven. And what this bell curve says is the majority of the learners should be your average performers. So let's keep that in the background and ask the questions. So the first question we need to ask is, is there a normal distribution? Well, although there is an increase in learners achieving codes one to five, there is a steep incline in, corners, in learners between, who are getting codes 5 and 6. So suddenly, the learners are getting codes 5 and 6, there are a lot more of them. The second question to ask is, do the majority of the learners achieve in the average performers section? Now, if you have a look, the majority of the learners are actually achieving a code six in this case. So the majority of the learners in the class are actually sitting in the high performers section between the average high of the average and the, and the high performers section. So now what does this tell us? Well, it could tell us a number of things. In this particular case, it could mean, mean that the assessments were too easy. It could mean that the top learners weren't challenged. It was too easy for those top learners. The assessments may not have assessed all levels of cognition. Remember we said that, that this bell curve represents skills. So if you are only assessing content, take a spelling test for example. It's easy for kids to learn, go home, learn spelling off by heart and come back and the majority of your class could sit in the high performance section. But you're only assessing one skill, you're assessing memory. You're not assessing a variety of skills. They may have only focused, in this case, on the low order thinking skills and not assessed the higher order thinking skills. You've also got to look at what type of questions were asked. Did the questions actually challenge the learners to think on a higher level? There may have been very little requirement to analyze, to synthesize, to solve complex problems or anything like that. 
So this could also indicate that this particular test or assessment or both the tests, because remember we started off with two assessments here, they might have been mainly based on content and not focusing on skills. And we know that this is a very, very important part of, of assessment. We also need to ask the question, was the teaching appropriate to the level of expectation? And then finally, the curriculum may not be challenging enough for the learners. So you can see there's a number of things that this could indicate. But remember we said right at the beginning, these are just red flags. It's not the answer. It's the questions we've got to ask. And it's really important with data analysis that we do ask these questions and not just say, oh my word, these kids did so well. I'm a brilliant teacher. Good term, good assessment. We've got to ask the questions. So I really challenge you in your grade meetings and your subject meetings to look at these distribution of codes and ask yourself, what is, why is it not looking like a normal distribution? And like I said, it could be, there could be a very valid reason, but it's important to know what that reason is. So what do we do with this information? Once we've got, once, once we've decided, you know what, there is a problem. The bell curve doesn't, it doesn't have the shape it should have. What do we do with this information? Well, the first is we've got to ask the, set, the questions to either our colleagues or to ourselves. Were there a variety of teaching methods used? Was there too much assessment at lower cognitive level? And then, of course, a key question to ask is, were the learners challenged to think creatively and solve problems both in class during the teaching, but also in the assessment? And then was the majority of the teaching focused on content? Were teachers just standing there reading out of textbooks, getting kids to underline in textbooks, or were they challenging them? And then of course, was there enough challenging or were there enough challenging activities and assessments? So once the information was taught, once the class and the concept was taught, were they actually challenged in the activities and assessments they were required to do? And probably the biggest issue is were the learners bored? Often learners get bored in class and often the reason is because of those, of all of the, these aspects that we've looked at. So use this information to analyze your data and to really use this as an improvement on your results. And try and do it at least four times a year. It's too late at the end of the year. The year's over, the learners have got their results and you want to move on to the next year. So, so please, I urge you to keep using this all the time.